This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the TP53 gene. As we were discussing the second hallmark of the cancer and in that we studied about the tumor suppressor genes and their mutations. And first of all we studied about the retinoblastoma gene RB gene. Now the second gene that we are going to study is the TP53 gene and it is the one of the most important gene. So now this gene is basically cause, uh, called as the guardian of genome. Now what does the guardian of genome means? Guardian is someone who is taking care or who is protecting something. So the protection of the genome, that this gene protect the genome. How it protect the genome? Genome means our DNA. So basically what happens that whenever there is a DNA damage, so this gene is activated and carrying out the DNA repair. This is I am just giving you a brief introduction to understand the concept of this and in the further means we will be studying a detail in about this TP53 but, but now for now just remember that why it is called guardian of genome because it protects our DNA and it repairs our DNA whenever it is damaged clear now uh, after the guardian of genome discussing the TP53 is basically the most common mutated gene in the human cancers clear basically it is mutated in most in uh, almost many cancers you can say all cancers for example it can it is mutated in the lung carcinoma in breast carcinoma in colon carcinoma so that's why it is the most common mutated uh, tumor uh, you can say mutated gene in the human cancers clear now what happens rarely rarely what happens that uh, the uh, in the child that is born he is having inheritedly he is having mutated tp53 gene so those individuals they are more prone to develop the malignancies and those individuals are more prone to develop a syndrome that is called as the lie fremenai syndrome clear whatever the pronunciation you may say that is the lie fremenai syndrome this syndrome is basically characterized by the sarcomas clear breast carcinomas, brain tumors, clear sarcomas, breast carcinomas, we have the brain tumors, we have carcinomas of the adrenal tumors, adrenal gland, we have leukemias. So this syndrome is characterized by these. So basically those child which are born in with the inherited mutation in the TP53 gene, they are more prone to develop the life fremenai syndrome that is characterized by the sarcomas, breast carcinomas, brain tumors and carcinoma of adrenal gland and the leukemias. Clear? Now uh, this TP53 gene basically it, uh, it produces a protein that is called as the P53 protein. This is the protein that is encoded by this gene TP53 clear now what happens that in the non stressed cells clear in the non stressed cells means when the cell they are uh, not stressed and when, when there is no damage they are normal so this TP53 gene must be inactivated obviously this must be inactivated so how this is inactivated basically we have another uh, you can say protein that is called as the mdm2 protein this protein basically this protein is the negative regulator of p53 negative regulator of p53 protein clear what happens simply that m this is your md m2 and this is coupled with the p53 clear they both are coupled and when they both are coupled so p53 cannot perform its function or you can say simply it is inactivated or this p53 is degraded because the md m2 is attached with it clear it is coupled with it so the function of p53 is lost simply you can say this Clear. So this is in the non-stressed cells. Now, in the stressed cells, in the cells that are stressed, stressed cells means 
whenever there is dna damage or some stress is there to the cell so what happens that this p53 becomes activated but how this p53 is activated obviously when it is coupled with the mdm2 it becomes inactivated so now we have to remove this mdm2 because it is the negative regulator so mdm2 and this is your p53 now what we have to do is that we have to remove this mdm when this mdm is removed this p53 is set free and when it is set free it will be carrying out its function and it becomes activated but this activation is not so simple that i have made a cross over mdm and this p53 is activated no this is not so simple basically what happens that this p53 gene it is activated by the two mechanisms and those mechanisms they are based on the type of the stress means the type of the stress will decide that which from which type of the mechanism the p53 will be activated now i'm telling you those mechanisms two mechanisms through which this p53 is activated clear now so you can say we are discussing the mechanism of activation of p53 clear now this mechanism of activation is depending upon the type of stress remember this thing it depends upon the type of stress so number first mechanism on the type of the stress when the stress is dna damage and hypoxia clear for suppose your stress is dna damage and hypoxia this dna damage and hypoxia this cause the activation of two protein kinases this activates two protein kinases clear this dna damage and hypoxia leads to the activation of two protein kinases now what are those protein kinases remember two protein kinases one is the atm and one is the atr they are the serine theuronine uh, related protein kinases clear so these are the two protein kinases that are activated when there is dna damage and hypoxia now their activation of this atm and atr the other protein kinases what are their functions basically when they are activated they cause the phosphorylation of mdm2 and p53 clear what happens when the phosphorylation of mdm2 occurs so this mdm2 is now removed and this is removed and this p53 now it is set free clear when p53 is set free this starts to accumulate in the cell where the dna damage and hypoxia is there so the p53 starts to accumulate by this mechanism clear whenever the there is activation of the protein kinases atm and atr and they phosphorylate the mdm253 this mdm2 is now removed and now it is inactivated while p53 is set free and now it will be carrying out its function so this is the first pathway uh, which is dependent upon the type of the stress clear now now the second stress okay i i am also telling you the full form atm is the ataxia telangiasia mutated and this is the ataxia telangiasia and rad 3 related clear so this is there is no need to remember their full forms just remember that these are the protein kinases atm and the atr that will be phosphorylating this mdm2 and they will be inactivating it and the p53 will be setting free clear now we have the second type of the stress this was the first type of stress which is, which is carrying out this mechanism the second type of the stress is the oncogenic stress clear now this oncogenic stress what it causes basically this oncogenic stress whenever there oncogenic stress it will be activating or it will be uh, activating a gene that is called as the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor this is a gene clear and this gene encodes two proteins that we will be discussing in detail in later that what are those two proteins that one of the protein that is important here i am telling you oncogenic stress activate this gene this is the tumor suppressor gene and this 
देन ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन इनकोड्स अ प्रोटीन दैट प्रोटीन इज कॉल्ड एज द पी फोर्टीन ए आर एफ दिस इज अ प्रोटीन क्लियर नाउ दिस प्रोटीन बेसिकली इट बाइंड विद द एम डी एम टू वेन दिस पी फोर्टीन ए आर एफ बाइंड विद द एम डी एम टू सो द पी फिफ्टी थ्री इज वंस अगेन नाउ सेट फ्री क्लियर नाउ दिस एम डी एम टू इज इज बाइंडेड विद द पी फोर्टीन ए आर एफ क्लियर एंड नाउ पी फिफ्टी थ्री इज सेट फ्री एंड इन दिस वे द पी फिफ्टी थ्री इज एक्टिवेटेड बाय द सेकेंड मैकेनिज्म सो दिस मैकेनिज्म दे आर बेज ऑन द टाइप ऑफ द स्ट्रेस नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ दे आर बेज ऑन द टाइप ऑफ द स्ट्रेस first type of the stress is the dna damage in hypoxia which will be activating p53 by this mechanism the second is the oncogenic stress which will be activating the p53 by this mechanism by activating this clear and this will be uh, means uh, activating the atm and atr clear so these are the mechanism by which the p53 gene uh, p53 protein is activated or it is set free it starts to accumulate now after accumulation after we have activated this p53 after it starts to accumulate what happens obviously it will be carrying out its function now we are going to study the function of p53 clear hoping that you have understand this mechanism now we are moving on towards the function of p53 clear functions of the P fifty three. They basically there are three types of uh, three functions of the P fifty three. First function that is is the transient cell cycle arrest. This is the first function. Means that P fifty three after activation it causes the transient cell cycle arrest. clear what happens that how this transient cell cycle arrest occur basically p53 it uh, increase the transcription of once again cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor this gene clear and this gene basically it uh, you can say this is a inhibitor this is cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor and this obviously will be inhibiting the cyclin dependent kinases clear and we have studied that cyclin dependent kinases and the cyclin d they are the growth promoter genes but when the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor are present and they are activated so these cyclin dependent kinases they are inactivated clear and when they are inactivated so the cell cycle will not progress obviously cell cycle will be arrested clear are you understanding this that cell, the cyclin dependent kinases they activates the cell cycle they carry out the growth but when these enzymes they are kinases they are inhibited by their inhibitors cyclin dependent kinases inhibitors so the cell cycle obviously will not progress and the cell cycle will uh, arrest will occur and this is transient means for the short time clear this transient cell cycle arrest is called as the breathing time breathing time why because in this time means this, the, when there is cell cycle arrest this is the time provided by the p53 to carry out the dna repair that was damaged because the dna was damaged so now this is the time where you have to repair the dna that's why it is called as the breathing time this is the first function of the p53 second function is the senescence senescence this is uh, simply senescence means complete cell cycle arrest not the transient Th this was a for a short time that when uh, the dna when uh, p53 it carrying out the dna repair when in this phase the dna is repaired p53 concentration decreases and the cell become normal but if uh, the if the means the stress are very much means there are many stresses clear so it will be carrying out the senescence means complete cell cycle arrest means for example dna damage is also there and the uh, hypoxia is also there oxidative stress is also there means the very much many stresses are together they have uh, means uh, attack on that cell so that cell p53 will be activated and it will be causing the senescence means complete cell cycle arrest clear now 
we have the after this we have the third mechanism uh, third uh, function you can say that is called as the apoptosis apoptosis basically when this occur when apoptosis occur this occurs when the dna damage cannot be repaired means when the dna damage when the dna damage is to such extent that it cannot be repaired so the p53 carry, carries out the apoptosis means cell death clear that when the dna damage is so much that it cannot be repaired so it will be t53 will be carrying out the apoptosis means cell death by activating the pro apoptotic genes clear so these are the functions of the p53 and this is all about the t53 gene clear now this was normal if there is no mutation in this gene so obviously the function of this gene will be impaired what are the functions transient cell cycle arrest senescence and the apoptosis means if this gene is mutated so what happens that whenever the dna damage will occur so the cell cycle cannot be arrested senescence cannot be occur apoptosis cannot occur and the cell cycle will obviously the cell will be converted to the neoplastic cell clear when this gene is defective the cell will be leading to the neoplastic cell because the dna damage cannot be repaired so this is uh, all about your t53 gene and if you have any question any query you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz